3D printing personal protection equipment. It's the new 3D Benchy right now, and rightly so. There is a great need for this around the globe. And well, I've got two things. One, I've got a really cool story to tell you, and then I'm gonna tell you, person around the world, how you can help where it is needed the most. Let's just get to it. As for the story, my friend Britt, a registered nurse, sent me a link via text about how people are 3D printing personal protection equipment during these times. She reached out because apparently there was a great need. They need masks and they need face shields. And luckily, I can help with one of those. My buddy Eric Cedarberg at 3D Verkstan designed a face shield that used almost like a visor and a plastic sheet in front. And I said, would this work? And she said, that would totally work. I then reached out to 3D Verkstan on Twitter and I was like, yo, can I get this model? I've got someone who needs it. And they said to work with Eric and they, they eventually sent it over. And I was like, yes, thank you. They sent over their A6 hole punch version. It has four sets of pegs on either side to hold the plastic down because they're using an A6 style hole punch. And I printed it out and it, it looked great. In talking to Eric, I said, Eric, I don't have an A6 hole punch here in Seattle. Is there any way that you could remodel this and make it so it would accept uh, a three hole punch version? And he said, ah, you're silly US standards, but he said he would get to work on it. What Eric did was use the three hole punch, but then used it to make six holes in the plastic by use of a little spacer. You add on that hole punch and sure enough, it worked great. So you can see there's two pegs up front, two on either side. The plastic holds really well. And then I can put it on my face. I can put it on my face and I just use some scissors to kind of trim the sides. It worked. It worked great. For Brit and what she needed though, I just opted to use the A6 version. There's going to be eight, eight posts all together that the plastic holds onto. And so that was what I was going to move forward with. With that in mind, I lasered a test, and this is it right here. You can see up front that there are four posts and then two on either side. It keeps the front more flat. It fits great. You can move around. It doesn't fall off, and it, well, it works for my application, my head, pretty well, but I needed to give it a test, and so Britt said she would come over and pick it up. <laughs> okay, try it on. Tell okay. me if it works. Okay, and then you have to take a picture, and then you have to send it to me. This is actually pretty... Uh, is it decent? Pretty. It's yeah, 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 it's pretty dirty. It's, it's perfect. Is it really? Yeah, it bobbed a little bit. It's good. Take a picture. What? Okay, anyway. Got it. The idea was Britt was going to take it to work and wear it for a shift in the emergency room. If anything is going to prove whether or not these things would work at all, it was going to be a shift in an emergency room in a hospital. So she took it there and gave it a shot and had some initial impressions. Hey, Joel, I just got to work. I'm testing out my new face shield that you got me. It's working great. Um, we just got an email from our employer saying that we're almost out of these masks. We have potentially days left. So um, people are making their own and this one that you created for me is working out great. It barely fogs at all, if at all. Um, it offers a lot more protection than our other glasses. Let me show you what our other alternative is. You can see it doesn't cover my face or have any of the wraparound stuff. Doesn't cover my mouth. The one you made me doesn't have foam on it. The ones we had been using had foam here that if we're supposed to share these or um, reuse them, harbor bacteria, sweat, all kinds of yucky stuff. So this is really great. I love that you made it for us. Everybody's really excited to try them out. Thank you. She told me, don't worry. She will get me something when her shift is over so she can tell me if it worked or not. And, and she got me the following and I was blown away. I can't believe how well this worked. Hey, Joel. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my day yesterday. It was my first day at work with the face shield that you made for me on your 3D printer. And I was able to use it with a couple different patients actually. Um, right now, the recommendation is to wear a mask with a face shield, but unfortunately, we have this shortage of masks. So we're trying our best to keep them clean, which is where the face shield comes in on top of protecting us from splatter or other things in the room. I had to start an IV yesterday and I was wearing the face shield. And the first thing I noticed that's different from other face shields I use is how little the one you made me fogs up. 
I was able to see, I didn't have to readjust it. It stayed perfectly on my head and I was able to accomplish the task without any difficulties at all. It was actually really nice to be able to, to do that. The, the other thing I noticed was how easy it is to clean. I just wiped down the face shield and also the, the headband part and uh, I, there's no parts on there like foam or sticky stuff that that can absorb any of the yuckiness that we come across in the emergency department. So all in all, it was really nice. I used it throughout the day. I had several of my colleagues asking me if they could have one too. They wanted to try it on and uh, yeah, it's, it's perfect. So thank you so much. And I look forward to using it again tomorrow on my next shift. The concept worked, we've proven it. So now it's time to print a whole bunch more of these because look at this. I got a hundred overhead transparency sheets. It means that I can make at least a hundred of these visor face shields, right? It was time to print. On the Raise E2, we had some Prusa Mint PEDG. On the Prusa i3 Mark III, we had Printed Solids Jesse Orange PLA. On the Raise E2, we also had some High Five Blue from Protopasta. And finally, the N2 Plus was going to town with some Polymaker PLA. That's not it though. With the prints, that's one thing, but I had to laser cut all of these different overhead transparency sheets. And the Glowforge, we're just doing it one at a time. So if you do more than one at a time, the laser is going to melt the sheets together. I needed a solution. And thankfully, my son, David, is the CEO of lasers. Put it over that little template. Make sure it lines up. You're lining up really good. Let me go over here. What do you, well, okay, so dismiss the thing from the previous time. And now it's gonna scan. Once it says print, you can do print. Now what do you wait for? The button. What's the button gonna do? It's gonna glow up. And then once it does that, what do you do? You press it. You're a quick learn. You see it? Is it doing a good job? What are we waiting for? And we're waiting for it to cool down, then we can grab it. Hey, look at that, it worked. It worked. Where does it go? Right. right there. Now, what about the pieces that are left over? You have to pick them off. And then you don't want to move the board because that's your template. Mm -hmm. There you go, and that's how you do it. Thanks, David, you wanna do a few more? Sure. Thanks. It took a while, but look, this is a whole bunch of overhead transparencies laser cut to fit all of these different visor headbands. Look at that, oh, they look great. You might be asking yourself, wait a minute, that's PLA. Is PLA okay to print with this? And the answer is yes. So I spoke with Matt, formerly of Printed Solid. He's the one I did that materials episode with quite a while ago. And he said, yes, PETG is going to be the best material to use for this. However, PLA, ABS, ASA, those will still work. They just won't last as long. Well, how do you attach the plastic? Well, let me, let me show you. So here's an overhead transparency sheet. Here we go. So here is the headband. And I'm gonna put these two holes right here. And then these ones get stretched over, just like that. And then around the side, you bend these out just a little bit and you're able to slide those on. And then when they come back, they lock it in place. Same with this side. <laughs> All right. What do you think? That's not too bad, right? This is how I helped someone in my community. And you're probably asking yourself, well, what can you do to help? And I've got some great, great ideas for you. Find yourself a local need. If you have the ability to provide and someone local to you in a healthcare facility or hospital worker or friend or something needs one of these and you have the ability to make them, go for it. Again, not much filament, plastic sheets from an overhead transparency and some hole punches and you're good to go. Not everybody has the ability to make one of these all the way, but don't worry, if you still wanna help, I've got some great ways for you to do it. One of the biggest stories about this is Joseph Prusa 
and the Prusa research team in the Czech Republic, they pivoted and put all their workers into making hand sanitizer and these face shields. Well, not these ones, these ones. These are Prusa designed face shields and how they work is a laser cut piece of plastic is attached to these pegs on the front, buttonhole elastic is then looped around the back and then it fits to your face, it's spaced, it provides a lot of really great protection. Prusa himself, along with his team, have given away, I think, close to 7,000 of these in his country. And what's great is the design is open source. And so a lot of people around the world are offering to take these 3D printed pieces in. What you can do is print this on your home printer and send it somewhere. And then someone else will add in the plastic. Someone else will add in the elastic band. Then they'll package it all up and they'll get it to the people that need it the most. And so in order to do that, there's a couple things that I wanna highlight. My buddy, Alan, you know him as Repcord, and he's got this going on down in Northern California. What you can do is send pieces to him. He has the plastic and the ability to laser cut it and he has the elastic and the means to cut it as well. And what he'll do is he'll package up uh, boxes of 25 of these and get these to different hospitals and healthcare workers through Masks for Docs. He's working with Chad Loader at Masks for Docs and they are a fantastic organization with with the purpose of just getting personal protective equipment out to the healthcare workers that need it the most. Also, I wanna point you towards Matter Hackers as they're building a few lists out right now, lists of people who need stuff and lists of people who can make stuff. And I think it's fantastic what they're doing, kind of solving the logistics puzzle of making it all work together. And obviously, as I'm recording this, it's changing. The landscape of 3D printing for personal protective equipment and in, the, in healthcare in general is changing almost by the hour and so as I find more links and more ways to update, I'll put them in the description. And so check back often. 3D printing is shining a big bright light on how people everywhere can help in this time of need. And so thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to wash your hands because I love you. And as always, Air 5.